Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Encounter Church Online. We are so glad to have you with us joining today on this snowy day. Hope you guys are safe and warm and ready to worship with us today. If you feel comfortable, I just invite you to put your hands out as we invite the Lord to invade our space, to come in. We're welcoming him today. Jesus, we love you and we just wanna worship you. We wanna honor you. We thank you for your beautiful creation. We thank you uh, for the story that you've written, the story of your life laid down for us. We thank you that you died and rose again for our sins, Father. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your mercy. It is new every morning. So today, God, we focus on you and we love you, Jesus. Oh, how we love you.
to you, Father. We say yes to you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, we say yes.
It's you and you alone You're the lover of my soul
just wherever you are today, would you just worship him? Would you thank him for who he is? Nothing else, nothing else. 
nothing else will do I just want Sarah and I were praying about what to name this, this new church plant that we, we launched a few years ago out of Orchard Road Christian Center. We really wanted a name that reflected our heart for people. We were up in Vail on a getaway in, in October and we really felt the Holy Spirit move on us and say, the name is Encounter Church. And that's because we want you to encounter God in a way that, that opens up your heart to receive his love and, and, and fill you up with that love. We want you to encounter God in a way that lifts the burdens of worry and anxiety and fear and, and addictions and all the things that just weigh us down to just lift those things off of us. We want you to encounter God in a way that changes your heart towards yourself so that you can love yourself in a healthy way. And, and because you are loving yourself, then you can extend that same mercy and grace and love to other people because God wants us to love us and love others. And all of that happens because we have an encounter with him. One encounter can change you for the rest of your life. And I don't know where you're watching this, this live streaming service this morning or this afternoon, but I do know that God is there with you. And the reason that we, we gather and we, we sing songs is so that we can share our heart with Christ, with our Father. And we, can, we can talk about things that, that may be hard to articulate on our own, but through the words of those songs we sing, we can express deep emotions and deep feelings and deep thoughts. And so I pray that, that you've had such an encounter this morning. I pray right where you're at, that as you sang with Bree and with everyone else on the worship team, that, that you were touched and felt that love of God. But I wanna challenge you to do something else. One of the other ways that we encounter God is by praying for someone else. And I know that some of you are on your own. You're, you're saying, well, who do I pray for? Well, you're gonna pray for you. And if you're with another person, maybe sitting on a couch or perhaps in a, in a, in a kitchen on a, watching a laptop with your spouse or a friend or maybe your children, Right now, I want you to reach out and just take a hold of their hand. 
just take a hold of their hand. And I want you just to ask one person that's in the area with you, the person whose hand you're holding, ask them how you can pray for them. It doesn't have to be, you know, a deep, heavy revy, but maybe it will be a deep, heavy revy. If you're by yourself, I want you to think of, of your greatest need at this moment, but also the need of someone else. And I want you to hold your hands together. And I want you just to lift yourself and somebody else up to the Father right now. And so I'm just going to pray. And I don't know if we can do this here. I know the musicians, you're holding guitars and things, but if some of the singers, would you mind just breaking apart and holding hands? And you didn't, would you? I don't know if you can do that, Bree, or not. <laughs> but maybe we'll get this across. But just pray for, pray for one another. And so, Father, I'm lifting up um, the worship team. I'm worshiping up the, lifting up the sound techs and the video techs that are in the control room this morning. I'm lifting up, Father, my wife, Sarah. I'm lifting up my children, Isabel, David, and Benjamin. I'm lifting up Marilyn, my mother-in-law, and her son, Michael, and all of his children. I'm lifting up my siblings. I'm lifting up, uh, you know, the people of our congregation, Lord. I'm lifting them up to you. And Father, I'm just praying for the greatest need they have. They may not even know what their greatest need is, but I'm praying, Lord, for that. And in Jesus' name, I'm asking you to meet that need. I pray as well, Father, for myself that, that you know my heart better than I do, Lord. You know my, my, my purpose better than I do. You certainly know my future better than I do. And on this, this spring snow morning, Father God, I just pray right now that, that you would just provide for me what I need so that I can fulfill the, the mission that you've given me, the, the, the purpose that you've placed on my life. And I pray, God, that all across Denver and in Spain and in Mexico and Europe, Father, in Asia, wherever anyone is watching this, in Nashville, Father God, wherever anyone is watching this service, that, that you're there with them. And Holy Spirit, that you just touch them in a very powerful way. I just feel like God is, uh, there, there's a job in, in and it's a, it's a high-tech job, and it's got something to do with video, and you've been praying for that, and I don't know who you are, but I just feel like the Holy Spirit wants you to stand in faith and believe God that that job is coming. Uh, there, there has been a, a married couple, and, and right now, one of you last night, you, you went away, and again, contact me if this is you very discreetly at EC at EC Denver. I, I don't want to just assume this, but I really feel like the Holy Spirit is saying that, that this partner who slept in the hotel last night uh, that they're coming back and you're going to reconcile and you're going to fix what's broken because you need to fix what's broken and you're going to get some help to fix what's broken but but that relationship is coming back i, I feel like that is a, a, a leading of the spirit of god and please you know hold me accountable let me know if that's you let me know if you need help we can certainly direct you towards some people that, that we really believe in can help folks through these kinds of marriage issues uh, but i just know that god wants to do big things because he's a big God and he wants you to encounter him. I say this in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, guys. Good to see you. You're all looking handsome and lovely as always. I am jealous of some of the guys' hair back here, I just got to tell you. It's, it's just not fair that they should have such great hair, but that's, that's good. Uh, thank you for, for joining in with us today. Uh, I... Uh, I'm just excited. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, we want to encourage you to, to tune in as well. We have our, our midweek uh, online streaming service. And the next Sunday, uh, I've got a message that the Holy Spirit's really, really put on my heart about just more of how we can connect to God and how we can live victoriously and how we can experience transformation and deal with all of the, the craziness that, that just seems to follow us around sometimes. But I invite you back again. That's Sunday the 21st at 9 and 11. You can also always connect with us online and uh, we're, you're welcome either way and we're just so glad you could be with us. You know, at this moment, I'm going to ask you, if you would, please, uh, go ahead and prepare your tithes and your offerings. You can do that by going to the website. That's ecdenver.org, and click on the Give, and you can scroll down and see there's missionaries and a number of different, you know, general tithes and offerings. You can also text to Give uh, at 28950, sending the word Encounter to that number. You'll see the information populated across the lower uh, part of our screen. People do drop off their tithe checks during the week. People come on live and give in live services. Some people mail them in. However you do, though, I, I want to just talk about finances. Uh, I have known a handful of people in my lifetime 
that, that never had a financial problem. Uh, they, they just, for whatever reason, they were born in a financially stable home, uh, that they were able to sort of replicate that same pattern, and they, they, you know, they succeeded financially, and they just, honestly, they, they lived within their means, and they just never really had a big financial problem. But that's the minority. Almost everybody I know, almost 100%, almost 100% of people have at some point in their life experienced a financial need. And when this happens, you know, my encouragement to you is, is to go to the Father and say, in Jesus' name, I'm going to pray the promise that says that you know my needs before I ask, and that if I'll seek first the kingdom of God, all the things that I have need of, God, that you will abundantly supply me. And just, just step in faith, following what God instructed us to do whenever we have a financial need. And, and we've seen amazing breakthroughs. I've seen, I've seen supernatural debt cancellation. I've seen uh, rent forgiveness. I've seen people receive automobiles. I've seen people get jobs they're not qualified for. I've seen all kinds of things. And I think those kinds of amazing miracles are wonderful. And if you need a miracle this morning financially, in Jesus' name, my faith is high for you to receive it. But there, there seems to me at, at this point in my life to be a place where I think God wants to move us, where we're not always in need of a financial miracle. I was uh, instructing a young man I was uh, talking to the other Sunday, and he was talking about you know, finances, and he, you know, he's got some bills coming up. And I said, you know, I really believe this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to have a rain barrel kind of, it's an image I want to use. And the rain barrel represents our resources, and he wants us to fill the rain barrel up. So we have provision not only to meet our needs but others and the analogy of this is, is that if you need a cup of water and your rain barrel is empty you got to kind of turn it to the side and dig down in there and kind of scoop up and it's really hard to get a cup of water but if your rain barrel is full well you can dip in that thing and, and it's no big deal to get a cup of water and God wants us to have provisions not only for our needs but to sow for other people uh, he wants us to sow into the, the, the food bank that we, we help partner with, Hope's Provision. In fact, you know we're continuing this entire month to receive uh, donations of food. You can drop them off in the week or you can you know, certainly bring them on a Sunday. And we'll make sure Sim and Linda and uh, their whole team of people, uh, they did ask us to pray for them. Uh, they are, they're just at capacity and they're just growing and thriving and they really want to expand and get more space. And so they're asking us to stand in faith with them to get more space. But, but the way that they're going to do that is people whose rain barrels are full are going to be able to sow into that ministry. And so that occurs when we learn how to be an obedient steward of whatever the resources are that God has given us. Whether that's one talent or three talent or five talents or ten talents, to, to use the King James versions. So my prayer for you this morning as you prepare your tithes and your offerings and your mission gifts is number one, if you have a financial need, a supernatural need that, that you just can't take care of, know that God knows that and he has miracles for you. But also know this, that he has got a different way of living that will allow you to fill up your rain barrel so that you have the resources to not only provide for yourself, but to have an abundance to give away. And I believe that to the core of my heart. Let's pray. Father, I lift up each person who's sowing this morning. I thank you, Father, that I declare by faith every need of encounter families are, are just met. They're met, Father God. If, if it's a, a supernatural need, Father, then praise the Lord, you're going to do it. God, if it's a need for better stewardship and better wisdom on how to handle our finances, God, you're going to do that. But however you do that, I believe, Father, the ultimate goal you want us to have is not only have an abundance for ourselves, but have an abundance so that we can share with others. Help us, Father, to never forget that the, the reason we're blessed is so that we can be a blessing. And motivate us, Father, to be generous and willing to sow wherever you tell us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, in just a minute, Pastor Sarah is going to come with the Word of God. But until then, I just want to uh, let you know that, again, we mentioned that the food drive is ongoing. But I also want you to know that we are preparing uh, already for our Easter weekend services. So I want you to watch this short video that's a little bit of information about that. Resurrection Weekend 2021. Was there ever a year when we needed a dose of resurrection more? in 2021. You know, Easter is all about resurrection, and I believe this year, from, from Good Friday to Easter Sunday morning, God wants to pour out His Spirit, pour out His love, pour out His power into the lives of people who just who need a touch of encouragement. 
who need a touch of hope, who need a touch of faith, and who just need to remember that God is for them and not against them. And so I believe that something powerful is gonna happen during our Resurrection Weekend services. And so I, I wanna encourage you and invite you to join us on Resurrection Weekend, either on our Good Friday service at 6 p.m. or one of our three Sunday morning services at 8.30, 10, and 11.30. We'll be both live and online. But, but we wanna connect with you because I know God wants to connect with you. Most importantly, I know there's a number of people that God wants to restore a, 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 a loving and intense relationship with, people who've, who've fallen away for whatever reason, and He wants to draw you closer to Him this Resurrection Weekend. So I look forward to seeing you there. This is Pastor Reese. God bless. Encounter family, happy snow apocalypse or snowmageddon, whatever you want to call it. Stoked that we get to hang out at least this way. It's not as good as one on one, I get it, but you know, better than nothing. And <laughs> we have to have a joke, right? I mean, what would it be? What would my sermon be without a joke? So, what happens <laughs> when you put your hand in a blender? You get a handshake. <laughs> I know, you're like, whew, I know, but it's going to get a lot better because we're going to move into the sermon now because it's going to be an improvement. Here's for hoping, right? So I know we've been doing the series on simplicity and influence. Um, Reese talked, has been talking about the last couple weeks. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking simplicity and influence. How does that relate to, like, conversations with Jesus? And what does that look like, potentially, with simplicity and influence? And if you remember these conversations with Jesus, we've talked about how Jesus had like four main groups of people that he did work with and, and conversations with. He had the receivers, the people who got miracles from him. He had the relators. He had the renegades. And he had what I call the reverent. That's my polite way for saying the religious. So, you know, if you're watching today and you're like, how does that relate to me? Why is that important? Well, I think it's super important because simplicity and influence are key descriptions of Jesus and his life on earth. And that's important for us because if we're gonna be like Jesus, there's a lot to be said for simplicity and influence. But when I think about this in, in terms of conversations with Jesus, I've really been settling into Matthew chapter 22, and I've been looking at this for mm, several weeks now. I know, typical Sarah. But one of the things I think that's something to consider is when you look at Matthew 22, if you have your Bibles or your phones, pop those out and we can kind of work through that. We're going to be looking starting at verse 15 and going through uh, verse 40. But when I think about simplicity and influence, the thing I like about them is that I think in some respects, simplicity is a little bit like, and influence is a little bit like Velcro. So I bought these as my little sermon props because I think Velcro is, is very indicative of what simplicity and influence can do. Because Velcro, and I found, I found this really interesting um, definition, Velcro is the combination of velvet as well as crochet. That's where they came up with the term Velcro. So I would say that simplicity would be kind of the smooth or the nice soft part of Velcro, and influence could be the loops part. So it's like loops um, with little hooks. And when you put them together, it keeps things sticky, right? And if you have to kind of pull them apart and they go, right, they make that sound. But I think that's what Jesus did in his time here on earth, his conversations with people. They were sticky conversations because people liked him. They wanted to hang out with him. And he was very, very appealing. He wasn't repelling and he didn't push away. People had conversations with him, whether they're receivers or renegades, relators, and even the reverent they had some interesting conversations with Jesus and found them to be kind of sticky conversations. So I want you to think about uh, Matthew 22, because in this conversation, th there is three conversations that happen with Jesus. And in these conversations, they're all with religious leaders. They're all with the reverent. And you might be thinking, well, what does that have to do with me? Well, that's what I've thought too. I'm like, yeah, not, that doesn't relate to me. I'm not one of them. I'm not one of those religious people or one of those like reverent people. That's for, you know, other people. But Holy Spirit started to talk with me and say, hey, sir, you need to be careful because 
when you start to say, I'm not that, it's, it's careful, it's thin ice, because there are times that you might have blind spots, blind spots about, oof, maybe I, I fall into some of those traps or, or, you know, areas that are a little bit squishy. So if we don't want to be like that, then let's look at this conversation, these conversations that the reverent people had with Jesus and see maybe what were some of their traps. And so the first trap I would encourage you to look at is the, what I call the Pharisee trap. And when you think about um, influence and you think about simplicity, I would su suggest to you that um, these reverent conversations Jesus had with, you know, Pharisees, religious leaders, they were not, <laughs> they were anything but simple. And the influence part was very much um, up for debate. It was combative, actually. In my opinion, they were very combative, hostile conversations. And so if I think about Jesus being simple and Jesus being a strong influencer, I would suggest to you that sometimes the reverent or religious mindset has a lot of complexity, it is a contrast to simplicity, and I would say that the reverent mindset is a contrast to influence. Not only is it complicated, but it's also dominating. I take these as opposites because I think that what Jesus did when he came on the earth was all about simplicity and influence. And ultimately that sticky, hardcore, you know, combined staying connected is related to Jesus because he is genuine love. But I would say that the religious group, the reverent group, um, worked very hard to keep their power to dominate, as well as made their work very, very complicated. So for example, if you look at Matthew 20, verse 15, this is a Pharisee who comes to Jesus. And just to give you a little context, Jesus has already come into uh, Jerusalem, the triumphal entry, all that, Palm Sunday. It's, that's kind of, you know, a couple days earlier than this. And what they're trying to do, the religious institution, Pharisees, Sadducees, and those leaders, they're trying to trap Jesus. Because again, it's a power play. They're trying to dominate him as well as complicate what they do. And so the Pharisee comes to Jesus in verse 15, and he plots and says, hey, let's see if we can trap Jesus. And so the trap here relates to power. It's a power trap. And, and really, they're trying to dominate Jesus and trick him and get him to do something that would, get, would cause a lot of problems. And this is what they say, hey, Jesus, should we pay tribute to Caesar or not? Well, <laughs> at this time in history, that's a super, super volatile question because Rome, Caesar, was controlling the, the, the military as well as political power in Jerusalem at that time was all about Caesar. And so the Pharisees, the religious people, were kind of in co cohorts, co cohorts, whatever you say that word, with, with the politics, and they were trying to trap Jesus. So it was a, a domination play. We're going to try to trick you and dominate and control and be and overpower you, Jesus. And I appreciate that Jesus didn't step into the trap. And I like what he says, you know, show me a, a coin, a denaria. And they show him a coin, and he says, Who, who's, whose inscription is on that coin? And they said, Caesar. And Jesus said, well, give to Caesar what belongs to him and give to God what belongs to God. And the play on this is that humans, we are made in the image of God. We, are, we bear God's image. So the coin and the power and the politics, let that, that kind of power play, leave that in terms of, of the whole political domination. But let's be careful that you and I, we are made in the image of God. And Jesus' response to the Pharisees was a reminder and kind of took them back to ground zero. Hey, <laughs> go back to Genesis chapter 2. You guys are made in the image of God. And so let's not get sidetracked or detoured um, with things that, that really take away from your core identity. You are God's beloved person. And I say that to you today. You might be sitting at home or whenever you're watching this and you might not sense that you are God's beloved daughter or son. 
But whether you sense it or not, the reality is you are. And that would be my prayer for you in this time, that you would maybe come back to some of those core fundamental truths, identity, that God is deeply in love with you. You are God's son. You are God's daughter. And as God said about Jesus, my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, if you're a daughter, he could say the same for you. You are my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. And so identity, let's be careful. Let's be careful that we, we settle into that core truth and, and move and behave and respond from the reality that we are deeply loved. But then the second trap happens, and this one like blows my mind, because this starts off, uh, we're going to go to verse 22. Sorry, I think it's 23. Anyways, the Sadducees come, and they start to ask Jesus questions. They're going to trap Jesus too. They're trying. And this relates to, <laughs> uh, this one I find fascinating. They start asking Jesus questions about the law and about resurrection. They don't even believe in resurrection, but nevertheless, they're going to ask questions about it. So they say to Jesus, teacher, Moses said, if a man has, dies having no children, his brother as a next of kin shall marry his wife and raise up children for his brothers. Now, there were seven brothers with us and the first married and died having no children. So then the wife moved to the second brother and then he died not having children. And then the wife moved to the third brother and so on down to seven. So when they get to heaven, who is she married to? <laughs> like I just, when I read this, it makes my eyes cross because it's complicated. It's the antithesis of simple. And when you look at what Jesus did with the Pharisees in terms of influence, they were trying to dominate him and he wasn't going to let that happen, but he was going to be present to speak into influence and reminding them of their identity. In this situation, <laughs> the Sadducees are trying to complicate everything. So again, it's like this contrast. And I think when we get into a religious mindset, I think we can fall into those traps, those traps of complexity and complicated and domination. It's a power play and control. But I appreciate that what Jesus does is he, he diffuses that stuff. He takes the air out. And Jesus, when he spoke to the, the Sadducees, he said, you know what? You guys have it all wrong. In fact, you're missing the whole point of this because in heaven, you know, everybody is, is whole and well and, and unique in, in themselves. And it's not necessarily a marriage question. It's more of a family question. You're made in the image of God. You're God's son. You're God's daughter. And so I appreciate in these two traps, one is a trap related to be complicated and the other is a trap related to being dominating, that we can see these conversations with Jesus, that Jesus steps into these conversations and says, hey, wait a second, let's come back to these Core, core essentials, because I'm all about simplicity and I'm all about influence. Because with those two, people stick. But ultimately, family, what I would say is simplicity and influence are an integral part of genuine love. And I say that because the last trap that, that the religious leaders tried to do with Jesus is there was a, a lawyer that came to Jesus and said to him, Hey, what is the greatest command? What's the first thing we should do? And Jesus replies to him, this is in verse 37, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and all your strength. And then verse 38, the second commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And my, my point in bringing this to your attention is Jesus' solution to these religious conversations revolves around genuine love and the simplicity of staying loved by God as well as loving ourselves and loving others because this is my sincere conviction when we love well and when we're simple in our love and we're not trying to dominate and control people but rather influence and just say hey I care about you you're important to me then that helps us be sticky that helps us connect bond and stay in community and connection with each other. And I think for us, I think it's very, very important as, as Encounter family that we're very clear in our own hearts about that vital, vital, essential ingredient 
that no matter what happens, that we stay rooted and grounded in love. Referencing Leif Hetland that we had a couple last month or so ago. Because I really sincerely believe that love is the genuine love is the ultimate expression, ultimate um, definition that combines simplicity and influence to be something very powerful and very attractive and completely irresistible. And I see that with Jesus. I see Jesus being irresistible. He, the people who fought against him, the, the reverent, the religious people, they struggled with, with him, but at the same time, there was also, I believe, a deep attraction to him. Some of them wanted to kill him. <laughs> they hated his guts. But on the other side, you watch Nicodemus and you watch that conversation with Jesus, and it was very, very heartfelt and um, an honest inquiry, honest conversation. And so I just encourage you, maybe you're watching, you're listening today, whatever's going on in your life, and maybe you've been struggling with, you know, some what seems to be complicated religion. You know, you got to do this, you got to show up for this, you got to go there, you got to do this, you dot these I's, you know, say the right words, you know, and you got to get, you know, all this stuff and rules, all that, this gyrations. And, and I want to just encourage you that Jesus' love for you is very, very simple. It's very pure, and it's not based on a lot of complicated outcomes or performances. At the same time, Jesus' love for you is a love of influence, not of domination. And this is very important because here's the, real, here's the truth, and this is really something to take home and think about this. In order for genuine love to exist, there has to be free will. So, for example, you go back to the Garden of Eden. God gave Adam a choice, free will. And when we're made in the image of God, we're not made to be robots and automatons and just kind of mindless compliance, you know, and cookie cutters, you know, paper dolls, all the same uniformity. God has given us free will, choice. We get to choose. We get to join. We get to maybe not join. We get to think about it. We, we, we even get to say no. But, but influence as opposed to domination. Influence is, is what is an integral part with genuine love. Domination is not anything like that. It's absolutely going to control you. And, and if you're not dominated, then, you know, you get rejected. You get repelled, trashed, dismissed. But I appreciate that God loves us. God loves you. And God loves you to the core of who you are. Not because of what you do. And you hear me say this often, but I think it's just so critical. God loves us because of who God is. And so when we have that rooted in our hearts, then I think we have a little bit of a lighter approach of simplicity and influence rather than trying to do that religious stuff. Because I think the religious stuff is, is just too heavy. It's too, too strong, too, too um, insurmountable. It's too, too much of an obstacle. Too high to jump, too long to run, too, <laughs> it's just too deep. It's, it's not, we can't do it. But with God and walking in genuine love and walking with God in love, then we have the opportunity to have simplicity as well as influence in our lives. And letting God be simple in our lives and letting God influence us. I love the gentle ways that God speaks and works and talks. I love that God walks with us, even when we have a meltdown, even when we turn away from God, God never turns away from us. So if you're watching today, you're struggling today, and maybe you've walked away from God, or maybe you're disappointed, angry with God because something happened, didn't happen, um, I, I can appreciate that's a struggle and that's a challenge. But ultimately, God is, is just saying, I just want to walk with you. And even though it's a rough journey right now, let's keep walking. Let's stay together. Let's stay connected because really genuine love based with simplicity and influence, it keeps us connected and it may get a little scratchy and rough at times, but the connection is essential because when we are rooted in God's love, God loving us, then we have healthy identity. <laughs> then we have healthy conversations, healthy interactions, and things are good. So I just encourage you today that from this, that we, walk away with a couple takeaways that you can think about. Number one, I love Romans 12, verse 8. It says, let love be without hypocrisy. <laughs> I think that's really important. 
Particularly if you read Matthew 23, the next chapter after this, Jesus just completely blows up all the hypocrisy garbage. That's the nice way to say it. Because hypocrisy is pure garbage. So Romans 12 verse 9 says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor to what is evil and cling to what is good. Cling. So keep things simple and have influence because it's all related to genuine love. And then finally, I would say this. Let's make ourselves available for God to love. Let's not disqualify ourselves from God loving us. Whether we disqualify ourselves because, you know, of all of our achievements and our actions and our activities and performance and outcomes, or maybe we disqualify ourselves because we did all the things wrong, right? I mean, both ways we can disqualify ourselves. And God the Father simply comes to us and says, hey, you're part of my family. You're my son. You're my daughter. Let me love you. Let me love you well. And so on this maybe snowy Sunday, if you're watching on Sunday or whenever you're watching, maybe take a couple minutes after this and, and after we take a little pause here and, and just kind of ruminate, settle in and ask God, hey, what would you say? How, how, could, how could I know your love today? And I believe that as we avail ourselves to God loving us, it changes the inside and then consequently changes the way we interact and participate, converse with people around us as well. So we love your guts. Thank you, Encounter Church. Fantastic to hang out with you. Hopefully you're staying snugly, warm, dry. Maybe you have to shovel the driveway, yada, yada, all that. But whenever you're watching this, but thank you so much for your time. And my prayer for you today is that you really nestle into God loving you. And from that love, that you walk in the true identity of who you are. So God bless you. Thanks so much.